God, we want to thank you one more time for everything that you are doing for us. You are so kind, merciful, and rich in mercy. And that's the reason why, Father, we feel under obligation to be thankful to every little things that you are doing for us. And once again, we come this morning, Father, to praise you, to worship you, and try to receive something from you to make us better client, uh, better uh, Christian if they will be tomorrow. Take me out of the way, Father, and come and help your children, Father, with the word of encouragement this morning. All for your glory and honor, and we believe and trust that above everything, Father, you have said in your word, seek ye first my kingdom and my righteousness, and everything else will be added. Father, that's your word that can never fail. Bless your children who came with a great desire to seek for your kingdom. And by that need, give them the rest of the thing of this life. Because you said it will be added. Add to their faith, their salvation, healing, deliverance, money, prosperity, whatever else they have need of this morning, Father. Grant it, Father, so that they can <coughs> praise you and testify to your glory and honor. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm going to try to preach. Because I have preached for a long time. I don't know if I can still remember. <laughs> oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So let me um, pass a few announcements. But it seems like the mic is echoing back in my ears. Um, first, uh, there will be there is an invitation for a wedding uh, from uh, our brother from Capstone. They are going to have a marriage this uh, coming Saturday. So all of you are invited. So if you can make it. What time is it? Huh? Three. Is it at their church? Where is it? I have the invitation. I don't know where I put it, but uh, if you want, I think uh, some of the girls here will be uh, bridesmaid, so they will know better where the place is and uh, the time. So you can contact them. Uh, it's always a good thing uh, to do. So that's uh, the capstone marriage. And also, uh, there will be a youth meeting for both groups. Uh, next month, I think I'm going to give the schedule for next month, uh, different group meetings. But uh, there will be the age 16 and up. I believe their meeting is going to be on Saturday, June 16, June 14. It's a Saturday at 5 p.m. But before 5 p.m., the little group from age 8 to 15, we are going to have a little retreat with them. I think uh, that's what we did. So I did already make uh, a reservation uh, to one of the Hilton Hotel. So for the age 8 to 10, oh, age 8 to 15, the retreat is going to be two days retreat. Uh, all day, Friday, uh, June the 13th, and all day, Friday, June the 14th. So your retreat is going to end on June the 14th at 5. So parents, if you can come pick up your children on Saturday the 14th the, the, uh, the at 5 o'clock, this way immediately <coughs> after there will be the group 16 and up for their uh, group meeting. 
So uh, I will give more schedule, but uh, I have already made uh, enough arrangement. So I will need uh, Julia uh, for the girls because they cannot be in a hotel by themselves. They need to be at least uh, grown up a age 18 and up. So maybe Julia is gonna be with the girl. And uh, the young Isaac, can you make it? Uh, will be with the boys. Uh, so that will be, it's a, a big suite that can uh, have about eight people in the room. So seven kids plus one grown up. Did you say amen, the kid? Smile a little bit. Leah, you like that? So, but you need to make sure that uh, it's all right with uh, the parents. Uh, and also next Wednesday, uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, I did announce it last Wednesday, so we will have uh, a special guest speaker. Uh, it's very, very hard to have him. It's uh, Brother George Smith. Uh, the husband of Sister Rebecca Branham. So he will be speaking to us. Uh, we, I was trying to do my best to get him on one of the Sunday, but uh, he's uh, in uh, Colorado Springs, so he could not, the bird over there, they could not release him. So, but uh, since I think he may be already in Colorado, but I did not have a chance to talk to him since uh, I was uh, really busy with uh, the travel of the graduation. Uh, lastly, okay. Lastly, I want to thank all of you for everything that you have done for Pastor Anise Fuma. It uh, really made me feel very good. Uh, for what you have done, your accommodation, your invitation, uh, your time to take him out. Uh, Brother Joseph, Brother Junior, Brother Joseph is now like uh, the expert on tourism from the church. Regardless of his uh, busy schedule with uh, work, school. But when are you going to graduate? <laughs> uh, you have been in school since I knew you. Uh, I think you are taking one of the 10 years degree. <laughs> so, God bless you because sometimes, you know, when I have guests, uh, if I have to stay home with the guests all the day, I'm going to tell you I cannot do anything else. And I can tell you since maybe uh, back and back, I cannot even to do my own uh, dedication when I use maybe to come, maybe to spend the time here, maybe two, three days of prayer for myself. I don't have time because you cannot leave the guests, but uh, you know, those little things, uh, if uh, people can give their time, those guests are not coming for me. They are coming, they are your brothers, they are your sisters. So take some time, walk them someplace, uh, make them eat ice cream, whatever you can. You know, these little things they will appreciate. And you know, every work you do, God is going to pay you back. Don't, it's not me, the one who can pay. I don't have anything to pay you back. But I know the one who can help you. And I think um, this month uh, I have uh, several plans, um, but I will announce them as uh, we go. Also, I want to thank God for traveling mercies. Uh, we did uh, travel to Utah uh, in a times uh, during two days, Friday and uh, Saturday, coming here Sunday morning. So. We thank God for traveling mercy. It's not granted. There are so many accidents. You can be tired and anything, even not tired, but anybody can come and hit you and uh, talking about different stories. So we are very 
grateful and thankful for the traveling mercies that God has given to us. And uh, also, by the way, we want to thank those who have committed their time, uh, their sacrifices to go support others. I know this is, um, we cannot expect everybody every time, but we cannot also not expect anybody anytime. So let really you be mindful, uh, spiritual, to know, to support one another. Uh, it's a very, very important, very encouraging. Don't you think like for others it's not important, mine only is important. But uh, trying to encourage one another, you know, it's a good thing to do. So God richly bless those who did, and I did even see uh, other young brothers uh, who came from different places, they did one, they did go straight to Utah and uh, after they went back, may God also uh, bless them. And that's why uh, Brother Moses is very thankful to all the saints who supported him in many ways during the time of his uh, graduation. As we are speaking, Brother Moses has a high school diploma. Stand up a little bit. Diplomé d'état Moïse. <laughs> Sitting behind Brother Isaac, another graduate. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, in the past, we did not know about college. Once you finish your high school, you look for a sister. Huh? You don't know that? My dad never he went to school. He finished his uh, maybe high school, that was it. At age 20, he was married. Age 22, I was born. So me and my dad, the difference was only 22 years. With my mom, the difference is even less, 16 years. And you say you believe the message, right? Huh? You believe the message? What does Brother Barnum say? Huh? Mary Young. He kind of grew up together with his parents. Daddy was 18, mom was, and you talk about following Brother Branham, right? In which way? <laughs> huh? Isaac. Mama Zoyoka? Soka ye kutun albandili kam, kutem wana bakalite. Papa Ove. Kalite. <laughs> you have to do it in the correct way. Amen. Uh, you have to do it in the correct way. Amen. But I know my old friend, they know who I'm talking to. Amen. Huh? Yes. My old friend, they are here. Brother Ale, can you look in my head? <laughs> so. Uh, lastly, before I move to to the preaching, I want to say something here uh, about uh, the circumcision of the woman. I had so little questions from uh, some of the sisters. What Pastor Anise said was correct. It's correct. And you know, I don't have time to go and uh, read different quotation. But you have to understand in which angle the speaker is talking. Brother Branham said, how many know in the message, the Holy Ghost, what is the Holy Ghost? He said, uh, the Holy Ghost is the sign of circumcision, right? You believe it. And what is circumcision? Circumcision is from the male to remove the surplus of the skin. And that cannot be done for women. So that's why what he was quoting was the Bible, 
and the message that a woman is circumcised by getting married. Is that correct? So, but don't get hurt uh, this is to feel like women don't have the Holy Spirit. No. He did not say that. That's how I understood how it is. Women receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost in the upper room as the men receive it. And the Bible said, whosoever will repent, he is entitled to the Holy Spirit. And in the Holy Spirit, there is no difference of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The same Holy Spirit that a younger person has is the same Holy Spirit that the older, Holy, uh, or, uh, older fellow has. The same Holy Spirit you have on the pew is the same Holy Spirit the preacher has on the pulpit. But there is a difference, right? It's not because a woman has received the Holy Spirit is going to preach the gospel. Is that right? Amen. So try to understand the things, the way, and the places they are. And I believe the rapture, in order to win the rapture, you need the Holy Ghost. And it doesn't say that the only man will be in the rapture. So there will be some women also in the rapture. But what he was trying to say is about the circumcision that women cannot have. And if you look also on the other side, uh, regardless of the Holy Spirit, women remain weak vessels. But they have the Holy Spirit. That's to tell you, brother, the teaching on the Holy Ghost, it's really something that you cannot compare one person with the Holy Ghost with another person with the Holy Ghost because they are different. Different. The Holy Ghost is the presence of God, but if you are a tall person, you will have the Holy Ghost. If you are a short person, you will have the Holy Ghost. Can the tall say, I have more Holy Ghost than the short? So this is a certain thing, oh, very, very simple. So, uh, and somebody who got the Holy Ghost will not be shocked or discouraged. Uh, I know I have it. I know God gave it to me. I was, it was a promise. It came to pass. I'm a candidate for the rapture. Amen. And uh, last thing uh, will be <laughs> talking a little bit about uh, the family meetings that uh, I talked about. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, in everything you understand the purpose. Each family is supposed in the house to pray, right? But the only thing I did emphasize was to give you, as the people did ask, we need one extra day for service. Uh, but most of the people working, you have two days off a week. So trying to get a third day of uh, service altogether, it's going to be very hard to gather all the people. The proof is whenever we said uh, first Wednesday, uh, first Friday of the month, uh, not everybody can show up. So it's hard. So that was really based on that. I say instead of having a group meeting, uh, let us have a church meeting at home. And the church meeting at home, I have based the time on tight. Every day is 24 hours. If we can take just one day a week and take one tenth of the day to have a family meeting, that's all the rationale behind it. One tenth of 24 hours is 2.4 hours. And then I just say, get your family meeting for two, at least for two hours. The 40 minutes before is on each person on your own. This way, if you have spent 20 minutes on your off in the morning, maybe 20 minutes in the midday, uh, you have already your 40 minutes plus the 20 you will spend together, you have fulfilled your 10th of the day. And the purpose also is to help each family 
to have their own experience. I have seen some people or heard some people, I'm not going to have a meeting in my place, I'm going to such, such, such. I did not say that. Is it clear? I did not ask people because when they did East, how do they say back in Anglais? Easter. Easter. No, the, the other Passover. When they had the Passover in Egypt, each ha household has to kill a lamb and apply the blood. So nobody left the house and said, I'm going to go eat at somebody else's house. We understand we can have little exceptions, like I know, like Sister Monique by herself, if she can go to Brother Paul, it's all right. But all those exceptions, you need to let me know. And I need to examine on each case basis, what's the rationale? If you don't trust somebody, what's the purpose you are going to live together? Try to accommodate your time and make a time and have your fellowship. And the other aspect, those meetings are intended to help us with the real life issues. Gather the family, give them the opportunity, and check on the progress. And the subject you can treat on those meetings, uh, they can be so simple. It can be from maybe uh, a, a preaching in the church, or a sermon, or something, or your inspiration. Try to check with your children. Do you understand what was being preached? And give them also the opportunity to be involved with the gospel. Read something in the scripture. And tell me, what did you read? You tell me what you did. And even you live together, try to share those experiences in way of becoming more practical. It's not to manufacture preachers. Huh? I did not say it's not to manufacture with you, but I know Christian, you can share the word, bring your experience. It's not prevented that a sister cannot read the Bible. Did you read that somewhere? Huh? So don't make things so complicated, so complex. Take it easy to the main purpose. And let me know the time you're, you are committed this way. I will also spend some time coming to each one of you. And when I come, don't pass the ball. Because even in my own house, I'm not going to preach. I don't want to preach. The only thing I'm facilitating to see the learning of the children, what they have done, you know, the whole purpose is to help them out. Help them try to understand. The pastor preached on this. He preached on this. What did you understand from it? How can you apply this to your real life? And same thing for people as you live together. That's the thing. It's not like, oh, brother, you know, I'm going to the mountain to meditate because we have service. I'm going to bring the seven seeds. The intention is not to manufacture preachers. Huh? It's to take what you know how to, can, to apply it to your real life. And I think every single meeting I've done, uh, it has been always a tremendous success because you pray about it, you lead the people to find out, to position themselves, and ask them the question. Ask each other the question, brother, what you said, how this can be applied in a real life. Sister, how you can apply this to your real life? Uh, sister, did you read the Bible since the morning? What was your experience throughout this week? Share with others. I think those kind of things is going to help the people with their spiritual life. Instead of sitting in the home uh, all the time, the young boys, young girls are uh, on the internet, Facebook, take some time, two hours to go in the, the Word. But when you give somebody responsibility, I have given... Uh, Sammy, the opportunity. Sammy, come stand up and uh, preach. Where is he? I know people coming from Utah will be sleeping as they keep an eye on all of them. So you give them, and you see, you ask Sammy, Sammy, you have to speak. I have seen Sammy spending all the day 
Where were you? I've seen Sammy all day with an earphone, trying to listen to Brother Branham's sermon, taking notes, because based on that, that's what he's going to speak of. And when they do things like that, you are one way helping them. And this is the same thing I do on every youth meeting, parent meeting, every meeting I do, it's not me preaching. You facilitate, you help the people, get involved to be better. You know, it always said, even in teaching, something that somebody is sharing, telling you your, his experience, it can help you, but it will help you more if that's coming from yourself. If you have studied, read something, and not like newspaper, but you read it, you apply it to your life, you share with others, the others are going to receive by yourself, it's grave in you. That's really the purpose. I'm not making the preachers. Huh? Because to become a preacher, it's a call. You have to have a call. It's not like going to practice. We are not seminarists. I think it's uh, clear enough. Uh, you have a question, uh, come talk to me. But I need really to know every family, their schedule. Uh, this way, you change your schedule, let me know. You live like Brother Martin with a Brother Eric, have your service. Brother Joseph, you live with Brother Brighton, try to find a schedule. Not this one is going here, this one is... Um, unless, like Brother Brighton was working in the mountain, uh, in uh, Greeley, did not have a specific time, conflict of schedule, we can look at on each person case basis. But try to do your effort to do it in your house. Huh? If in the house the father is not there, mother, take the leadership. Gather your children. If you don't, you want to get some input, huh? we have our service Thursday, 8.30. You can come and see how we run this. Maybe it can help you. Or oh, the time I come to your place, it can help you. I don't say, brother, you have to go in the mountain three days to come with a, a sermon. No. Take something practical. The pastor spoke about this. This is what you think. What you think about this. How this can help you. You can go maybe from the youth meeting, from the grown-up meeting, whatever meeting. Uh, try to em emphasize. And this is how you will go. And uh, the last thing, when I came uh, from Utah this morning, I was looking. I knew that already uh, the Pope is uh, visiting Jerusalem. How many knew that? Uh, the Pope went to Jerusalem uh, for a three days visit. I was looking at the news. Uh, they say Pope Francis three days visit to the Holy Land, which begins Saturday, is centered on trying to heal those wounds. Uah, so he is in a big, very huge mission. And I believe before he, he went there, he tried to get commitment from a Palestinian and Israeli. And they both accepted. Say, okay, we want the Pope to come for world peace. Remember, the whole thing is behind the word world peace. But we understand the peace we need is everlasting peace. But it's a way, the ecumenical uh, way is trying to establish themselves. And the, all of this is a sign to you to let you know Brother, it's not a time to play. The very first visit of any pope to Jerusalem was with a pope, uh, what is it, Paul VI. Uh, Brother Branham said, Paul VI. And you know, Paul was the name of the very first messenger of the first church age. And the six is the number of men. When the very first pope, Paul, pope, uh, Paul VI, left 
Vatican to go to Jerusalem, it was a complete blackout. Expect. At the final visit, it will be another blackout. So you make sure you stay on the top of everything. Israel is always a sign. Look at the fig tree. What is taking place? It's not by chance. Brother Branham was speaking in a Seven Church Age book. Did I give you that quote? Uh, give me first to turn on the light, paragraph 113. And I think this is the last announcement before the preaching. Brother Panam said here, did you notice the moon blackout? Uh, you know, the sun is always the type of Christ. That's the bigger light. And the moon shines in the absence of the sun. And that's the moon. And the moon is always a type of the church. So, did you see the moon blackout the other night? Before the Pope went over to Rome, from Rome to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the oldest church, the moon is a type of the church, always reflecting the light of the sun in the absence of the sun, and it blacked out. I draw that on the blackboard, you know those are draw he did, three or four years ago, and show the churches in hundreds and thousands of home, homes across the nation. What was it? A shadow. It's a shadow that the Pope is going to go to Jerusalem. Uh, to Jerusalem. It was a type. The first time a Pope over left to come back here, come in the name of Paul, and so forth went down through those places and to bless the river, to cross it and so forth. What does the river need blessing? Huh? The Pope went and blessed the river. What is needed for? That means there is something behind the scene. And going down to Paragraph 114, what's the matter with the church age that we are living in today? Can't you see it? God declaring it in the sky, declaring it in his word, declaring it on the paper, declaring it amongst the people. Can't you open your eyes and see the hours? These are they that testify the truth. Open your eyes, brother. If you are still sleeping in a spiritual sleep, uh, hoping like we still have a lot of time to start working, getting ready, you will be surprised. Watch the great ecumenical move. It's going into this council up there now, just forming an image of the beast in Revelation 17. And Branham continue paragraph 116 by saying, now is the time to rise and trim your land and shine with the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power. And uh, in the Seven Church Ages exposition book, I just want to read uh, the last comment. Here is the sign in the sky. Yeah, put it up. You can read it. We have read this several times already. Here is the sign in the sky. The last eclipse of the moon was, was a total eclipse. It won to a total darkness in seven stages. In the seventh stage, the total darkness came as the Pope of Rome. Paul VI went to Palestine to make a holy tour of Jerusalem. He was the first Pope to ever go to Jerusalem. The Pope is named Paul VI. Paul was the first messenger, and this man goes by that name. Notice, it is the sixth or the number of men. There is more than a coincidence. There is more than a coincidence. So Branham is saying it's not just something that happened like that. It's not. 
there is a vindication. There is something that God is doing for you to be aware and open your eyes. Amen? Amen. So that's uh, the visit of the Pope over there. We just, we, it doesn't really affect those who have been re re really ready because you know you have more than many signs. This is just to strengthen your faith to know that we are really at the end. If you have been slacking, uh, taking a uh, break, this is the time to get back to work. And that's why I want to preach this morning on uh, graduation. Amen? Amen. My title is Graduation. You say, where do you get all those titles? I went to a graduation. I saw what was taking place. And I knew that the Brother Branham preached a message of graduation. How many know that? Ah. See? Sister, look at the title. Uh, 630601. Uh, Brother Branham was invited, like uh, that guy was invited from the bigger position to come and speak to your graduation. And uh, Brother Isaac, graduation, it was the mayor of uh, Denver who went as a special speaker. Brother Branham was also invited as a special guest to a graduation. And he preached on graduation, 630601. Uh, ah. You know, usually they give a title, Come, Follow Me. And they give a smaller title. What is this? Huh? Can everybody read it? Graduation. So when I'm preaching on graduation, I'm not saying something special, right? We are just behind the prophet. And this is the season for graduation. We are talking about, I'm not preaching on this young boy's graduation. I'm talking on your graduation. <laughs> Because graduation, what is graduation? You know, I went to the airport to pick up the van. They say everybody was traveling everywhere, everywhere in the United States. This weekend was a graduation weekend. You can barely find a room in a hotel room because it was all booked up. Everybody going to the graduation. Now, what is graduation? Graduation just it's a just a ceremony to recognize the effort that somebody has done. That's all. Somebody has done a hard work, he has worked so hard. Now people from the family, the church, different places, they just come to recognize the achievement. And this is a good example for you as a Christian. All the work that you are doing every day, one day you are going to receive your graduation. Amen. And during your graduation, Jesus Christ, hallelujah, Amen. Jesus Christ will be invited to speak. And the angel will be there to be amazed at your achievement, your accomplishment. And you know when you, they do the graduation ceremony, uh, they have all the, the children, all the students, they are standing there. They don't wear pants. They wear a robe, uh, a gown, with a cap. How do they call it? Cap. And you have uh, your chancel on the side. And when you call your name, you pass it over. Graduated. And in during the ceremony, they have to recognize, even though. You all graduate from the same school with the same degree, but they have also to recognize some special achievement that some other people have done. And as we go to that graduation ceremony, I want to stay with an outstanding achievement that he was outstanding in doing this, 
He was outstanding in doing this. She was outstanding in doing this. This is why Brother Branham, when he was invited, and by the way, those who graduated, I give you the homework, go listen to the tape of graduation. Not only them, you all. Isn't it wonderful? Those who are planning to be graduated, uh, just go listen to the, uh, the tape. And when a name is called, People scream, shout. All of this means just congratulations. Or in another word, well done, my servant. Amen. So this is what we are looking at. And that was the things that we are looking in the natural. They are a good reflection of what is taking place in the spiritual. In the spiritual. And also speaking about graduation, uh, there are different levels of graduation, right? I heard the other day Rashte was graduated from uh, kindergarten. It's a graduation. A graduation is just a milestone of achievement. And then after you can graduate from elementary school. Who did graduate from elementary school? Divine elementary school or who did great graduate from middle school? How about high school we know, college. People have been going for so long. <laughs> Airplane, train, different direction. So as we speak about graduation, we talk about graduation at a different level. Huh? Even in college, they get the graduation. You know when you graduate with uh, maybe a bachelor, uh, you wear just that, uh, that white, that uh, whatever, gown. There is nothing around. But when you go to the next level, you graduate with a master, they take another clothes. What Moses was wearing, she was wearing this way. But with a master, they get something extra. You wear it on the reversal. You put it in there. With a PhD, you get a gown with a bars in the black, etc. So when you go like those who were in the graduation, you can tell this one is a PhD, this one is a master, this one is a bachelor. So different level of graduation. But the point I'm going to talk to you is this. Every graduation level just set up a milestone for the achievement that you have done, and it also opens a new challenge for the future. You cannot go to the elementary school if you don't graduate from kindergarten. And you cannot go to the middle school if you don't finish your elementary. You cannot go to the high school unless you have your middle school achievement certificate. You cannot go to college until you have your high school diploma. And that's why high school diploma in the Moses ceremony, they say, this one is going to the University of Iowa. This one is going to University of Colorado. You know it open. And you cannot go to the master until you finish your bachelor and so forth. So that means everybody, regardless of the graduation, it is still opening a new challenge for the years to come. So now, I'm not talking about only these two young boys who graduated, but we, let's talk about all our graduation. Because all of us, one way or another, we have graduated. One day I was uh, looking, I think, at a children's hospital or somewhere. They say, oh, this baby is graduated from wearing a diaper. It's a graduation. Huh? You are in a diaper, diaper, but when the day you move, you leave the diaper to start wearing your pants without a diaper, it's a graduation. That's telling us, all of us, we have one way or another graduated. If you might not have graduated from college, 
But the graduation I'm going to talk about, don't miss this one. This is the greatest graduation. Is the new challenge to receive eternal life. As for all the graduations, every person who's going to graduate will need a leadership. That's the reason why we have the Holy Ghost being given us to lead us into our final graduation. And once you graduate, you know, after graduation, there is a party. Uh, they have a party, they have a party. When you graduate, after the final step being led by the Holy Ghost, that's the wedding supper. That's your graduation feast. The graduation uh, celebration, where people are going to dance, put the powder on the head, and whatever they, and the angel will be looking at it. This one come from Laodicea. Oh! Which part of Laodicea? Oh, you know, I was living in United States. You mean, you live in United States where women walk with short, uh, just barely top on the, uh, on the breast, and you did overcome all of these things, but the Bible said, whosoever look at the woman as last, you mean, you live in that con condition, you look at that woman, and you did overcome, hallelujah. Amen. What a ceremony. Ataba jena li kolo bako kamwa disu Poto longi satana na misala na ye Esengo monene eko zala kuna Mwa siri loba ye ako tilibala Ataba jena li kolo bako kamwa disu The angel world will be Amen. amazed Say, hey, who's this? You in? Hey, young boy like this, you were not married. You mean all the young girls, they didn't come to solicit? Oh, they came. But you, you turned them down? Yes, I did. By God's grace. Hallelujah. The angel will be, ah, 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 ah. The angel, some of the angel, they will say, if I was there, I could not overcome. Because angels, they don't know redemption. Amen. Redemption is for you, the fallen race of Adam. But there was redeemed by God's grace. You know what redemption is. That's the reason why the angels say, hey, Kikumba, don't start. So, now they will look at some of the women. Say, hey, sister, you mean all your life? You live just with one man? Ah, 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 ah. But we heard in America, ah, even married men, they go cheat, cheat. But you, you mean you live with that man when even he was so tired? Ah, ah. Yes. Because I was following my marriage vow. Amen. Angel will look and say, ah, 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 ah. The Angel will talk among them about you. But wanna pay some more respect. If you only know who you are, brother, you will be one of the proud persons walking on the face of the earth, knowing that your presence is shaking all kingdom of the demon. The demons are afraid of you. That's the reason why you have to boost your chest. Ah, before the devil, brother, young boy, don't be afraid. Ah, you know, all the boys, all the girls, they do this. Not all of them. There will be some exceptions to make the angel wonder about. That's your graduation ceremony. So let us stand as uh, we want to read the Bible first. We turn into the book of Ruth, chapter 2. That's our final 
graduation ceremony. Ruth chapter 2, start verse 5 to 12. And I'm going to talk, I will not keep you longer. Uh, I'm going to just use some example of women. Because women in the Bible, they are the type of the church. Uh, I will maybe take Ruth and uh, other women in the Bible as well. Then said Boaz unto his servant, that was set over the reapers whose damsel is this. And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, It is the Moabitish damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheep. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now, that she tarried a little in the house. I want you to keep this verse 7, just to tell you, in order for you to go to a graduation ceremony, you have to work. Amen. Huh? All those people who have graduated, if you ask them what they have done, they have worked so hard. Some of them, they have to leave their bed to go somewhere uh, all night to study, do their homework in order to be recognized as they have been. But if you are a slacker, you don't do anything, you just be happy about going to church whenever you can, and the rest is not important. What has been preached, if you apply it or you don't, I'm telling you, those F minus students, they are never been recognized. F is the lowest grade, right? So if you are average F, F student, no graduation ceremony. They will make you go back to study. We are looking for A plus. GPA four out of four, or just a little bit below this. Huh? Those are the students we are praising today. So Ruth, they gave a testimony that when Ruth came to work, Ruth did not rest. She was working so hard, so hard, and Ruth graduated with a diploma of marriage with a major in cleaning. Hallelujah! Yeah, that was <laughs> her recognition. Uh, cleaning! Root without rest. That's what we are going to talk about. Let's continue. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field. Ah, brother, sister, don't go glean in another field. Huh? Because the pastor is preaching on graduation, work, work, work. Don't go work in the devil's field. Huh? Following naked women on the internet, huh? the devil is going to recognize do your graduation ceremony and he will be the guest speaker. In another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by my maiden. Let thy eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them, have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art at first, go unto the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drunk. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself to the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thy eyes, and death Thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger. Ruth was a stranger. You, the Gentile, you are strangers. You did not deserve a graduation ceremony. But it's just by grace. So through that grace, work as hard as you can. And Boaz answered and said unto her, 
it has fully been shown me all that thou hast done unto thy mother in law since the death of thy husband, and how thou hast left thy father and thy mother and the land of that nativity, and art come unto a people which thou knewest not here to fall. And keep this verse as well. The Lord recompense thy work. Whatever you do, there will be a reward. The recompense is the graduation. Uh, root, deciding, root, working, root, resting, and root, rewarded. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wing thou art come to trust. And another scripture. Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 to 10. After you graduate, there will be some noise. There will be some new song. There will be some trumpet. There will be a new dance. Because when you go to a graduation, ah, they start singing. Because after graduation, there will be a new song. Revelation chapter 5. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the scripture. You may be seated. So as uh, I did already introduce, I'm talking about a graduation celebration. So in order to come to your recognition, it takes really a hard work. It takes a hard work. This is really my uh, message this morning is to tell you, brother, sister, there is a graduation ceremony for you. And uh, as you go to the graduation ceremony, you know, you can be a lot of people in the same classroom. Are you going to rejoice when your neighbor is graduated but you are not graduated you will not be rejoicing because what is going to be good to you all the classroom they pass you stay this is the same way in the church this is the same way in the family so let each person work hard for your own salvation amen because the recognition is going to be only for the winner Amen. And the winner is not going to be a church. The winner will be the believer. Amen. So don't base your faith on our churches. Brother, let me tell you, even if God comes and tells you your church is going into the rapture, which is true, because in every church, they have three kinds of believers, and the two believers are going. Amen. But what about you? Where do you locate yourself? So what is more important, work as hard as you can. And don't you rely on the work done by your neighbor. Oh, you know that our pastor does so many things. I believe he's going to be raptured. So what's the purpose for you? Let us work individually. And when you are working, doing, let me, I'm just taking this very, uh, to the lower level so that we can understand this language when they give the homework each student is doing the homework each person and you are doing your homework regardless of what your neighbor is doing when there is an exam each person is going to study and you are not concerned if my neighbor my classmate is uh, studying or not what is matter is your own study and when you are doing your study can you come and complain oh teacher 
I'm tired. I've been studying a long, long hours, but David is not studying. Have you hear anybody saying that? But why in the church, as a believer, when you do something for the Lord, you start comparing with others? Oh God, only me, only do work and continue to work. The Bible said in Revelation 22, verse 11, give me that scripture. Uh, let them that are just remain doing justice. Those who are filthy, let them continue. It's not your business. Just keep doing what God has called you to do. If God has called you to clean the bathroom church, keep doing it. God is going to bring the reward. And if somebody said, ah, brother, you know, we have to work somewhere. Uh, you can come and say, sister, can you give, can I give you a break? I want to do this also. But if your name, your hand are so beautiful that you can never bend your back to wipe a little bit, keep doing it. Each worker receive his salary. The Bible said, he that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. Uh, those who are going to the movie, uh, spending their time on their Facebook, internet, watching whatever they do. Brother, this day I'm not going to talk about you quit to do it. Keep doing it. And when you do it, don't do just a little. Do as much as you can. Because at the end, in hell, there will be no two hell. Hell with a person who did adultery once and the one who did adultery a hundred times. No, it's going to be the same hell for everybody. And I used to tell people when I was in the Congo, you know, even the people you see, He's mean. Oh, Mobutu did this. Oh, Kuya, he was killing people. If you don't go to heaven, you will be with him. Mm. Ah, but he has done a lot. Oh, yes. It's the same spirit with different magnitude. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. But we have no comparison. Oh, I'm doing, I'm the only one doing this. I'm the only one doing that. Keep doing the good work. Amen. God is going to recognize you. There will be so many in the field. Two in the same field. One will be taken, one will be left. The one will be taken is the one doing great work. So this morning, I'm here to invite you to do a good work, outstanding God work for your God, knowing that your reward is coming. And the reason why I took the two scriptures, uh, the scripture of Ruth and the scripture of Revelation chapter 5, is this. Brother Branham speaking in the message, Gabriel instruction to Daniel, paragraph 47. He is referring to... Revelation chapter 5, uh, when they start singing new songs. Now, in the fifth chapter, in the fifth verses, we find in our previous lesson that we talk about that kinsman redeemer, which we found out was Christ. You see, Brother Panam is taking Revelation chapter 5 and matching it with the book of Ruth. And that's why he's saying, type it with root. So, four stages in the ministry of root. The first one was root deciding. You have to have a decision on which kind of work you have to do. It's exactly what the young people are doing. When you go to college, you, do you see go to college in any match? No. You have to decide. I want to study chemistry because 
After my four years, I want to go to the medical school and be a medical doctor. They will tell you this is the path to go. So keep in mind, graduation always takes leadership. I'm going to put the word leadership here to see those people who have graduated, they have accepted a certain leadership. You cannot graduate from any school if you don't have an advisor, right? You will not know which class to take. You cannot graduate if you don't have teachers. So the teachers are your leaders. You cannot be successful if there is no parent to support you with the financial need. There is a leadership. And in everything to be successful in your graduation, you need to have a leadership. But coming back to the step here, Ruth deciding. And after you take a, de a decision, Ruth was serving. Ruth was working. And that's what the Bible said. When Boaz came, he wondered, who is that woman here? Oh, you know, that's a lady from Moab. She came here, she asked for a room so that she can work. How was her, her work? And the supervisor said, Boaz, listen to this. Since Ruth came here, I have seen people gleaning in this field, but since Ruth came here, Ruth never rest. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ruth was working. Ruth was working in a way that the supervisor, the Holy Spirit, has to notice. Amen. And report it to the Father. Amen. That's the reason why. After hard work, God is going to give you a rest. Rest, which is the time of the Holy Ghost. Amen. After you serve, you work so hard, you work so hard on your knees with your hands up. Amen. Lord, I see the sign. I see Israel. I see the Pope doing. I know there shall be time no more. Lord, help me. I want to overcome this spirit. I need to overcome this spirit. Your work, hallelujah. Amen. God will never, never overlook your work. And in order to recognize your effort, God is going to put you at rest by giving you the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And after you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, then Ruth was rewarded by getting Boaz. Boaz, who is the type of Christ. And all of this, it takes a leadership. Who led Ruth? Naomi. To be successful in your graduation, you need a leadership. That's why you need a pastor, you need a church, so that it can lead you to your graduation ceremony. But when you say the, ch the time for church is over, uh, I'm going to follow tapes. Yeah, but when you go listen to Brother Bram tapes, all the tapes are talking about you choosing a home church. What do you do with those church, those, those tapes? Huh? Are you playing with tape or you listen to the tape so that you can adjust your life based on what is on the tape? Brother Branham said, don't you flirt. Today you are in this church, tomorrow here to No, you must have a home church where you pay your tithe you support with your presence and your prayers. Then you are following Brother Branham. That effort as you serve, God is going to recognize you. So coming back to what Brother Branham is talking about root here. He said, type it with root. Number one, root deciding, root serving, and root resting. And later on, root was rewarded. Deciding was a type of justification. Serving, making herself ready, was sanctification. You come to church, they preach. 
Sister, it's not good for a daughter of God to have longer nails. Huh? It's hard. I'm going to cut them. And you hear the message. It's not good to wear high heel shoes. That's the type of Jezebel. Even though you like those things so much, but for the sake of God, you start serving. You start cutting the, the heel. You start wearing decently. You start hiding your body. You start leaving your hair in a natural fashion. All these things, it's your work. After hard work, God is going to put you to the rest. You are going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you will be heading to the wedding supper. Resting was with the Holy Spirit until the wedding supper came. How beautiful. Brother, you take every woman in the Bible. I'm going to mention a few this morning to tell you that all of them, they did the work. They have to work for their salvation. The church came through John Wesley. Oh, uh, Martin Luther, justification through John Wesley, sanctification through the Pentecostal, baptism of the Holy, God, Holy Spirit, and now resting, waiting for the coming of her Lord perfectly. Our kinsman redeemer, the elders, was right when they called him a lamb, about to become a lion, his judge. He was a lamb, you know, with the seven seals sealed the book. When the book was sealed, it was a lamb. But one day, when the book was taken, the mediatorial work was finished. The time for mediation is over with the opening of the seal. Why? The opening of the seal has been opened to call the last people from the Gentiles. That's why the Bible is talking about the workers of the 11th hour. What was with the workers of the 11th hour? Thank you, sister. The workers of the 11th, if you want to read it, it's in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 20. So, the workers of the 11th hour, there were people who have been called to serve. They went and they worked, and when they finished, they came to receive their salary. The master take just one penny and give to them. And the next group came. They worked and they finished. The master said, your salary, one penny. Give me that Bible scripture. Matthew chapter uh, 20. They give them one salary. Brother, this is to tell you, the salary for all of us is the same salary. Amen. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder which went out early in the morning to hire labors into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with labors for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. The, the salary was just a penny. And he went out about the third hour. Maybe the hour of the Luther. They came by the manual. They came and they worked. They start working. They start working. Uh, at the end, what is the salary? One penny. But they work so long. And so others standing idle in the marketplace and said unto them, Go ye all into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. Again, he went about the six and the nine hour and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle. And that's you, the workers of the eleventh hour. And said unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? They said unto him, Because no man has hired us. He said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. So, when even was come, 
the Lord of the vineyard said unto his steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, that were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. And they likewise received every man a penny. You know, it's not because you came to the message earlier that you are going to the patients. Hey, Brother Moses. Okay. So, they, they came. And when they came, they received the same salary. They start complaining. As you read the Bible, saying, This last have won, but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden, and he all the day. But the, he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not thou um, agree with me for a penny? Brother, it doesn't matter what time you come into the message. If you came 10 years ago, you receive one penny. If today you can accept the message, you receive the same penny. And the people who have been so long will say, Oh, Pastor, I've been here so long. Why I can't just get a penny? The salary was agreed for a penny. Now, what is the penny? What is the penny and who is the worker of the 11th hour? Brother Paul, I'm speaking in the message the seal of God. Brother Paul, I'm speaking in this message. He said, now watch him. He said, hold it until what? The 11 hour people could come in. The last calling of the Gentile. So you, the last group of the Gentile, are the 11 hour worker. Mother worked there. Dad and them worked there. Grandmother worked back there. This is our age, the 11th hour. The 11th hour is the age we are in. That world war stopped on the 11th month in the year, the 11th day of the month, the 11th hour in the day, the 11th minute in the hour, that, that, that the 11th hour people might come in. Receive the same baptism of the Holy Ghost that they did back there in the beginning. To bring back the power and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, same sign and wonders. So there is only one baptism of the Holy Ghost for every 11 hour worker. So there is no difference between the Holy Ghost of the man and the woman. You are all the workers of the same hour. You receive the same salary. That, that's the reason why. Instead of complaining, oh, why the pastor said it, why he said it. No, just rejoice because you are going to receive the same salary. Amen. The same salary. Irenaeus received, Paul received, those in the upper room, Peter, Mary, and so forth. You receive the same salary. But you cannot receive it without making your decision to work, without working, serving like Ruth was serving. And the brother, when I'm speaking about Ruth, he said in the message, Revelation chapter 5, part 2. Paragraph 111. Brother, graduation is a reality. You have to work. And Branham said about the work of Ruth. He said, Ruth was working daily with fear 
and trembling for her salvation. Don't you cross your hand and say, Brother, we are in the message. We are in the message. In the message is just to bring you to start working. In the people who are working, if there are people working, it's the people who are in the message. Don't you be just relaxing, say, I am already in the message. I just go to church, I don't know anything. Every believer who has been called, you have to question God why they call you, how you have to serve God. Because your reward will be based on your work. And the Bible said, work as it is still a day. Because night is coming when nobody can work. Oh, brother, sister, why do you come uh, just to church? I go to church, I don't do anything. I cannot help in any way. No, 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 no. That's his, that's her, that's the pastor, that's the deacon. I cannot do anything. Try to get something to do. Amen. If you are expecting a reward, do something. There are a lot of things that people can do, brother. You don't need to copy or fight on a little job. There are so many works that everybody can do. You can just give yourself a different. You pray about it. God is mindful. He can inspire you on what to do. You know, oh no, I'm not married. I cannot do anything. Sister Phoebe, come here. Sir Phoebe, come here. Phoebe, not married, but she was working. Amen. Trying to get... But there is so many things you can do. Look at the way the preacher is preaching. He's sweaty. Huh? You can take maybe the shirt, take it to the land. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, Phoebe. You have to be mindful. And the question was asked, Brother Branham, by his sister. Because ah, the sister, they don't do anything. One sister asked Brother Branham, Brother Branham, I'm on fire so much for God. How can I serve God? Said, As you serve your husband, you are serving God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sisters. Hallelujah. Amen. You serve your husband. Uh, how do you serve a husband? You know, in the Old Testament, they did not even wear shoes. The husband working on the dust all day, and then the husband going to the restroom outside, stepping on the, all the stuff. But when they come, the husband, regardless of what they do outside, in the home, they are the president. And you women, God created you. Because God said, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to give man a helper. Uh, you are looking for things to do? In them time, barefoot. But now we wear shoes, even with socks. When was the last time you touched your husband's sock? Rempli du saint <laughs> And when the husband get in the house, you look through the glasses. You don't even know when to say, ah, honey, welcome home. Mm -mm. That's a long time. That's a long time we did it. But we are talking about root serving. You serve your husband, you serve God. Amen. Try to do the best work you ever never done before. Brother, this sister, this is the time. It's personal has to do. And you, brother, ah, you will say now. You see, you also you have work to do. Young people, I'm gonna tell you this summer. In the two weeks, I'm gonna give you all a big assignment. Women, girls, everybody. We are going to do a campaign of evangelization. In a way that we will decide. Because everybody needs to go in the field. Huh? It's a wonderful thing that David here come and say, you know what? This is my convert. Ah, you know what? 
if you bring somebody to the Lord, there is a big reward on you. And the, the whole church we are sitting here, we have nothing to do this summer. It's boring. It's boring. I've been so mindful. I'm going to give you a big program. Jehovah Witnesses, they go from place to place to knock the door. You know, in America, you cannot put a, a, a podium and start screaming on the street, right? They will arrest you. We will go in a way home to home. And I will give you the formula. Brother Branham said in the message, the end time evangelist, the message is based on the message of Malachi 4. Just I will show you some scripture. You go with the Bible. We have done in the past taking this uh, pamphlet distributing. Now we go with the Bible. This is a scripture, this is a scripture. When you go, make sure you caught them this. You caught them this. You caught them this. We have to do something. Root serving. Before your graduation ceremony, everybody has to work. This pastor, when he takes a time off, he's reasoning, he's coming with his stuff. Brother, this is the day that each person has to work. We have to work. Maybe your boss has to work. Your neighbor, just knock at the door. You know what? You see me every day. I go to church. The church we go is different from any other church. Oh, what is the difference? No, because in this age, God never changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. Do you believe it? Yes, I do. You know that God of Noah is still alive. Yes. As I did with Noah, God is sending a prophet. Amen. Break the conversation down first to the prophet. Without talking, who is the prophet? Just make the person recognize the value of a prophet. And talk about Noah. Talk about all the prophets. I say all the prophets. And bring that person to ask you the question. Do we also supposed to have a prophet today? Oh, hallelujah! We have one. But he has been overlooked like any other. Oh, who's that name? His name is Malachi. Amen. As it was with Moses. Unto whom I have prescribed blessed for all Israel. This prophet as also instruction for the whole world of the Gentiles. Ah, you mean in the U.S. also? Yes. Where, did, where is he? Hallelujah. Everybody will have a word. Brother Eli, with your size, huh? you have to bring many on your shoulders. Testify to somebody. Tell somebody. Either they believe, they don't believe, it's not your work. But you have done work. But you go pray and say, Lord, you know. Brother, you know what? You may have a problem. Everybody has a problem. You have a need. You have been praying, praying, praying. You change the position of prayer. From your knees to your hands up, to your head down, feet up. No result. But let me tell you, you can change something Amen. else. If you can flip it, by saying, God, I'm going a different direction. If you can bring one person to truly believe the message, there is a reward. Maybe it's the key to solve your problem. Hallelujah. Amen. Sister Grace, to the maternity, when you sit down, uh, you are screaming, you tell the nurse, God has sent the prophet, hallelujah. And the best thing I'm screaming is what they did in the Bible. Ah, what they did. Yeah, if I'm here, Hallelujah, brother. Each person, woman, you testify. Father, you testify. Young people, you testify. You live a clean life. You speak to somebody. See what God can do for you. Uh, Summer is going to be very busy. We will be working with bags uh, like Jehovah Witnesses. Set a time. Maybe I say, maybe four days. When I'm off, four hours, I'm going to visit somebody. You don't need to go very far. And you don't need to go to people you are maybe acquainted with. Huh? Just pray, be mindful, let God lead you. 
If God tell you go to this one, you just go respectfully. Uh, if somebody say I don't want it, leave them alone. It's not an argument. It's not the purpose to go demonstrate, but the purpose is to let somebody hear that God has sent a prophet today. And as it was with other prophets, if you don't, it's on you. And then, after serving, God is going to make you rest. And after your rest, you are going to receive a reward. If the angel, they said in the Bible, one sinner who repent, it's a big party celebration in heaven. What do you think if you can lead somebody to Christ? Lead somebody to Christ. It can be, be a big difference. Brother Eric, no English. God is going to provide English. Huh? Take a, even an English Bible. You know where Malachi 4 is in any Bible, anywhere. So you read here. He reads, you see? You see? This is what. Open. You go to Amos. God does not do anything Amen. without sending a prophet. <laughs> this is also in the Bible. You know, if they have a Bible, read in their Bible. Amen. Because they may think your Bible is twisted like the other witnesses. Say, you have a Bible? Yeah, can we read? Sammy! You take to the Jeffreys. <laughs> huh? The gospel into Jeffrey's house. I, I, I want to go play with my friend. Yes, the friend, the friend have to hear the gospel. Kikumba. Where is the Mesa? Yeah. The gospel to the neighbor. When they say stay home, I go play. Go play with the message. Tell the message to the neighbor this week. It's getting dark. So let's go back to Ruth. <laughs> Paragraph 111. Ruth making her decision, a type of the church, the Gentile church. She decided and crossed over into the land. Now, a lot of times, we Methodists and Baptists, we think that all you have to do. She had just got started. She hadn't got nowhere yet. She just got over into the land. Now, the next thing she has to do, she had to work. As a Christian, we have to work. God did not call us to be relaxing. We have something each one of us to do. And Branham said, she become legalist. She had to work out of out her own salvation with fear and trembling, like you did. Huh? Branham said, like you do. But do you do that? Salvation is, yes, you are saved by grace. But you have to accept that grace and work for grace. Because the Bible says, faith without work is dead. You have to put your faith into action to do something for God. She went out into the field and put her clothes upon her and went out into the field and cleaned behind the maiden in order to get sustaining food for the day. Is that right? What was she doing? She was trying to find favor with Boaz. So she worked her way through the stage of legalism. So all the work Ruth was doing Credit to Naomi. Naomi was the leader. Every woman doing work, every person must have a leadership. You cannot come to a graduation without a leadership. Because if you don't get a good leadership, maybe you are not good. Thanks. Uh, you need a leadership. Uh, you go, maybe I'm going to do medical school. You don't know anything about chemistry, you are going to fail. And because you don't know, you will never come to a graduation. So there must be somebody behind 
to look upon you, your skill, your ability to lead you. No, you go study engineering. You do this, you do this, and then you come to the final graduation ceremony. So graduation means you have to go through counseling and leadership. In the message, a man running from the presence of the Lord. Brother Branham say, then faith without words is dead. If you say, I believe it, and don't make no act. Hello? Hello. You believe what I preach, right? But if you don't act, you don't, you don't believe. You're just doing like Jehovah Witnesses. You heard those noise, and that's it. Just like the message. If you say, I believe it, don't make a act. What good does it do? See? Noah went to work with his hammer and built an ark to confirm what he was talking about. To vindicate his faith, Noah could not just say, it's going to rain, it's going to rain, the rapture is soon, the rapture is soon. Noah has to take a hammer and some nails and start cutting. And Branham said, that's what we have to do too. That's what we have to do too. We have to go to work and prove our faith by our words. Our words prove our faith. So Noah, because Noah decided, Noah served, Noah rest, Noah was rewarded. Noah get a graduation uh, celebration. Noah graduated with a diploma of engineering specialty in arc building. That's a ceremony. That's a graduate. Brother, sister, what is going to be on your degree? Your graduation ceremony. What is your specialty? Noah, that's the real engineer. Because the rest of the engineers in Noah's days, they also built up. But when the flood came, all of them sing. Except the ark built by engineer Noah. Why Noah was successful? Because Noah built his ark with leadership from God himself. That's what we have to do. We cannot work on our own. We need a leadership. The pastor may be just a facilitator to tell you there is a work available here. There is a work available here. But the Holy Spirit through the pastor communicated to you must tell you exactly what kind of work you have to do. Yield to the Holy Ghost. Some of you are going to be engineers. Some of you, I don't know. Uh, let me take another woman. Uh, that woman, Mary. The Mary. Mary is the woman who washed Jesus' feet, right? Her name was Mary. Lazarus' sister. Was her name Mary? Moses. Comment les Marie? Where did you find that? In the Bible. Thank you. John, John, John. Where do you see that? Yes, sister dear. So that sister, she came, a prostitute. She came in Simon's house, where they have a party. Jesus went there. Uh, you know, all the men, maybe, uh, they you are used to foot washing. But Jesus walking, nobody watched Jesus. So Jesus somehow, he was found in the room with dirty foot. Brother, you know, there are some things that can happen among you, with your brother, maybe or your sister, so that you can do the job. God can just create an opportunity for you to do the job. But when you look at the job, you say, ah, <laughs> the first is going to do, and you pass. Huh? Like the story of the good Samaritan. 
The Levite came and saw, he passed. The priest, he passed. But the good Samaritan said, wait a minute. A man in such condition, this person can be killed. He need help. I have to assist. This is root working. Your brother, your sister, can I have a need here? And the person God wants to solve the problem is you. But very often you look and say, <laughs> the pastor is going to do who? If the pastor doesn't, the wife, the pastor's wife, or the deacon, but what are you going to do and when? So Jesus was in the same type of condition. And Jesus said, whatsoever you do to this little one, it's unto me. Do you think all the needy people have, Jesus has to come with a, a army of angels to go do the work? You are Jesus, representative of the faith today on the earth. It's you. You have to go. So that prostitute, because the people going into the church, they are formalists. They could not do anything. They have been sitting there doing nothing. But that prostitute, under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, she recognized who that man was. And she said, oh God, why this man can be the only one sitting here with dirty feet? I am going to do a service, a serving this. And she went, oh master, oh master, I'm not a good person. Maybe I was raised in a bad family. They did not tell me about the message. That's why, and my dad died when I was little. And to make the living, I turned myself to prostitution. But I recognize, as you sit there, you are the light. And when the light comes into contact with a predestinated seed, there is a spark coming inside. And something starts telling her, the leadership of the Holy Spirit, go watch that man's feet. I don't have water. Oh, praise God. You have natural water. Amen. Believer today, preach how hard you can. You will never see tears anymore in the church. Because they are modern and they live in America. If they want to cry a little bit, Seven Christ. <laughs> but that woman, tear of repentance. Brother, when a believer truly does something wrong, you don't wait until they will catch you. You did something, you come with a tear. And she was crying. Oh, Jesus. Did Jesus kick her? No. Jesus liked the service. When they say, hey, look at this woman. She's wasting a perfume of very expensive. Jesus told them what? People say, you can use this perfume to feed the poor. Jesus told them, the poor people, you have them all the time. But me, you don't have me all the time. Women continue. And some criticism study. If that man be a prophet, he did not know that a woman cannot touch your feet. Huh? Why? But that woman did not bother. She was crying. She was crying. And after no tower, she looked nothing. She just the hair came. And she wiped. What if the hair was painted in red? You will paint Jesus' feet in red? That's the purpose God gave you the hair. She started wiping. She started wiping. At the end, she graduated with a diploma of sinless, with a specialty in a tear and foot washing. Hallelujah! That was a graduation diploma. What is your diploma, sister? You have been talking about ceremony. You have been going to graduation. Natural things must inspire our life. Amen. Which diploma do you have? In the kitchen? You don't even know. You can get a diploma in feeding God's servant. Huh? Pastor so and so came and preached. I want each one of the pastors to say, ah, 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 ah. 
zéro wana a a a na ye bisebino. I was really licking my finger. That Thompson, I have eight Thompson, but this one was. Ah, sister, can you talk to my wife also to tell her which kind of spice you have done? Because you have prayed, you had been under the leadership. Something has been done. What you have done to this little one, it's unto me. You can have a diploma on your graduation with of kitchen with specialty in purity. There are so many, many things that you can do. But all of this, it takes really work. It takes work. You cannot come to a graduation ceremony and a wedding supper without work. So that woman received her graduation. And Jesus said, all your many sins are forgiven. Amen. Amen. Brother, you know, to be forgiven, you think you have just to do what? Just to do a service for God, God is going to remember you. In order to be blessed, just do some service for God, God is going to remember you. But very often, God is sending people your way, you pass them to the pastor. You pass them to the next person. You pass them to the... Let them receive all the blessings. Let them receive and continue to receive. Those who are skipping, let them continue to skip. I have only a piece of meal left. Let us bring the widow of Zarapat. Another woman who served God in a critical time. And she said, you know, there is nothing left. But this is a man of God. Brother, if William Branham was here, do you think how many invitations he will receive? But the God of Branham is still here. Through his children. Open the door. Invite somebody to lunch. You get a paycheck. Invite somebody to the restaurant. Eat. I like Olive Garden. You know, for wife, Sarah, Ah, brother Ale, next paycheck. Let's go to. Ah? We don't forget what we're going to do. We're going to pass the phone for Mulamis. We're going to pass the phone for Mulamis. We're going to pass the phone for Mulamis. Brother Bison, you got already a job, right? We have to go. <laughs> Sister Sylvie. Sister Sylvie. Masiru Wingi. To tie the pool. But what I'm telling you is just to give you ideas. Do something. That widow, the last meal, she look at the condition of the son. She look at her condition. But at thy word, I have to put God first. That was the way God has prepared for the solution of that widow. That was the prepared way. But what if that widow turned down the prophet? She will eat the last meal, it will be over, and she will die. But you know God is able to send even the, the bird, the crow, take the meat, go give to my servant. He could have done it for him, but he said, no, I am going to send you the way of the widow. And in the meantime, because the deep called for the deep, he placed the deep in the widow of Zarephath to give. The meal to the servant. As soon as she gave the food, the bearing of oil was always there. The wheat was always there. Brother, maybe God is sending somebody your way. God is sending still the people our way. Huh? Sometimes you have to do certain things in a certain way. Huh? Brother, there is a fellowship. Nobody is paying. I'm not going to pay either. For you to pay and God to bless you too. Uh, but the pastor think he has money. He can do this. Uh, if I do, I will still be blessed. But sometimes I'm going to squeeze my pocket. Uh, so that you do it and you be blessed. Because when you be blessed, 
I will be blessed also. Brother, don't you understand the gospel? This is the secret to your graduation. It takes works. It takes sacrifices. Those young boys, they have sacrifices. Moses had to leave his beautiful Congo to come here, live alone, surrounded by mountains and cows. If he did not accept it, no diploma. So you too, in order to make a biggest achievement, you have to sacrifice something. Sacrifice your meal, sacrifice your bed to sleep on the ground one day. Oh, brother, if you can listen to this, I believe somebody is going to be graduated with the biggest diploma under the leadership of the Holy Ghost. So from the uh, widow of Zerapat, let me close with this out of glory. Everybody know the story about uh, that little girl who was just a cousin uh, among uh, the family. Brother Branham said, the thing that attracted that young boy from the ranch from Chicago was the character. The boy said, I'm going to Colorado to look for his spouse. She found this one like a painting brush that passed on the lips. This one <laughs> with the hair full of uh, the kiraki. This one you add the rest. So the young boy looked. What about that one? Oh, don't pay attention to the one. She, she, she is the one doing the dirty work of the church. But those, you know, they are educated, intellectual. They are sitting there with their glasses. They cannot do this. And she takes the bucket of dirty water, barefoot, but the man was looking at the character. Character. That's the one I like. That's the one I like. And you know the story. As soon as the man approached her, gave her the promise, she continued doing the hard work, Amen. saving every penny for the wedding dress. Brother, sister, God has sent you the prophet to prepare you for the wedding dress. Do the hard work and try to be mindful. Any work that, you know, if it's something good, like uh, after church, bring a water, of, a water bottle to the pastor, everybody will go to the store. I will get 10 bottles of water, I cannot finish them. Uh, the easy one, everybody run after. But the hard one, try to locate yourself as I'm preaching. Speak to God, say, Holy Spirit, inspire me some of the dirty, neglected, that nobody does. You look maybe at somebody that nobody pay attention, like that Brother Martinez here. Say, Brother, do you eat maybe hamburger? Can I take you maybe to spend some time at least at McDonald's? Brother, you buy that hamburger, you see how he's. Maybe you don't see him smiling, but buy him a hamburger, you will see. You will love it. Look at the despised one. Maybe the young boys, they live by themselves at home. Maybe I don't know how they know how to cook, uh, even though. But sister, cook some good pondu and say, Brother, after church, I want to see you. Take this. Go. God blessing are coming. Your blessings are there. God is creating opportunities. But why do you skip them? Let us work like root. And I'm telling you, brother, no work will never be, no work will be in vain. 
If the people of this world, they can recognize the achievement of the young boys who came from Africa with a broken English to I saw some Chinese. Huh? They say one year in America, but he graduated. In which language? But he did work hard. Let me tell you, as French people, we know alphabet. French and English, they use the same. But a Chinese, <laughs> from this to this, it takes a hard work. In one year, and you see the person graduate, it took a lot of effort. Brother, sister, make a lot of effort. And if the people of this world can recognize every effort, how much more your heavenly father? Those little efforts you do, God will never overlook them. He will never. He always pay. If you do it for the pastor to pay you, the pastor will have hole in the pocket. But God, I don't know not doing this for the pastor. I'm not doing this for you, 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 you know. I'm doing it for him. And the way I do it, with a pure heart, I know. I know. Even in the last minute, God is going to pay me back. At my ceremony, he's going to be there. At my graduation, God will be there. I will, he's never missed a graduation opportunity. Let us work for that opportunity. Let me add one more woman. Rebecca, the husband, wife of Isaac. She was not like any other woman. Oh, uh, because you talk a lot about uh, married women. Let us take Rebecca when she was still single. Rebecca was rewarded with a diploma of marriage with a specialty in camels, thirst quench. You know, when you read the Bible, you may think it's an easy story. But if you get into the picture to see where the camel were and where the brook was, you can see the valley and the mountain. And you know, people usually say, Oh, this boy drink water like a camel. Because the camel, they drink a lot of water. And the Bible said it was 10 of them. 10. And Rebecca did not bring the water in a big container, it was in a pitcher. The Bible said on the show, just a small creature. Get water. They think we can draw as a lesson from Rebecca was a commitment to work. Commitment. You want to receive a diploma? I can ask those boys, how many you started school with at the beginning of the year? Maybe many. When you come at the end of the graduation, not everybody is there because of commitment. Amen. Just commitment. Somebody can start going to school. I want to go to school like everybody in the church is going to school. Let them, when they put the root square <laughs> to get the GED. <laughs> <laughs> the root square will send you in the kitchen. Because it's not easy. It takes commitment. To receive your diploma, you have to solve all the root square and do all these things, do all the project, and finally, some people will be discouraged. Some people are going to give up. Some people are going to abandon. But the Bible said, only those who will stay until the end. Okay. Brother, this message, I don't know how many years you have been, but people you believe the message with them, where are they today? Amen. It becomes so challenging. Ah, you mean, we used to pay tight in the Congo, but here, with the American dollar, you mean, if I make 2,000, I have to make, to pay 200, 
You done. This one eliminated. Some are eliminated, still being here. Ah, huh? eliminated being here. <laughs> Before you start paying another big. Oh, you're not going to pay. Oh, you're not going to pay. Oh, you're not going to pay. No, no, no. Dieu va comprendre. And the devil is pulling the money. Pulling the money. Pulling the money. At the end, you are so in a big debt. You cannot even know what to do. And you just say. You cannot start fresh without correcting correctly. You start fresh, you are going to get in the same hole. Just give yourself a few months, you will see. And then you turn. The business is not working. The children are not working. The wife, not working. My boss at work, not working. What is working? Only you? Brother, look at how you are avoiding blessing that God. Let us work. Put ourselves completely to work. And know that there is a graduation. There is a reward. There is something that God has for each one of us. So this one graduated with a diploma of marriage with a specialty in a dishwashing. The cousin, the one who was washing the dish, he got a specialty with outstanding price in a dishwashing. That was the graduation. Now, as I'm closing, there is a graduation ceremony for each and every one of the called by God, from the young people to the grown up. But do you know what to do? Have you decided this morning? Because nobody, we can go, or a lot of us, into graduation ceremony, but when you get to the graduation ceremony, when you are sitting, they will pass the paper with the names only of those who have attended. If you come, your name is not there, they will not call you. So, if you come just to attend the graduation ceremony here, your name is not here where your work has been to be recognized and graded, you will be just sitting here. But the wedding supper, it's a reality. And we recognize that to come to a graduation, it takes a leadership. That's why everyone, Rebecca, her hard work, her hard work that she did, there was a leadership. God has to provide either his. There was a leadership. Paul, his hard work, the Holy Spirit, pillow of fire, was the leadership. The same Holy Ghost God has given into the church for your leadership. Would you accept it? And say this afternoon, say, God, the subject was looking funny, but I think it's a deep then we think. Don't compare your effort, your work with anyone else. Keep doing that good work. Amen. You know, American bosses everywhere, when you do a good job, they say, man, keep up with the good work. Huh? Keep up with the good work. Keep up. You keep up with the good work. Let us say the same thing. Let us keep up with the good work. Each one of us. Little, grown up, even young people like Hope, Grace, keep up with the good. You have to find something to do. By helping your mother in the kitchen, by helping your parents, you are serving God. Keep up the good work. God is going to recognize you. You know the person who is going to come to marry you. You know where they will come? Nobody knows. 
You know what test they are doing? They are some men. They are so quiet. Huh? You don't know what their mind is. They are watching the little thing you are doing. Watching the little things. And most of the reward we talk about, Ruth, Rebecca, that little cousin, it was the reward of marriage. To show you that if there is a reward in the natural marriage, that's just a shadow of the real reward in the spirit. Let us focus on that. May God richly bless you. yourself your degree in which field of the world will you have your specialty each one of us let us meditate don't you walk out of this place it's not in vain that these things have been said God has seen the need for graduation. The whole world is talking about graduation. And you know, when Brother Branham preached that message on the graduation, he took Mark 17, talking about the rich young ruler, uh, to speak to the graduates, to tell them how their effort has been. Now it's commencement, reward, and to congratulate them for their hard work and remind them if you have done so it's because of leadership rather seek the baptism of the Holy Ghost let the true baptism of the Holy Ghost be in you to lead and guide you to what you have to do in order to serve God Rejoicing, bringing in the tree. Oh. 
that we have been called to graduate also. We have been thinking about graduation only for our children. But God, you have spoken to us, showing us, showing unto me personally, regardless of the degrees I have, there is a final graduation ceremony. And it takes really works. It takes leadership in order for me to do the work. I need the leadership from you, the Holy Spirit. And that's what we need to ask. Let us pray. 